Most parts of the United States are seeing between 10 and 11 hours of daylight this time of year. But the capital of Denmark is farther north. It's averaging fewer than 9 hours of daylight right now. And as the cold, dark days of winter drag on, a light festival is brightening things up in Copenhagen. It's the seventh time the annual event's been held. It runs through most of February, and it sheds sparkling and sometimes surreal light on dozens of sculptures, art installations, and projections, getting people outside, giving them new perspectives on places they pass every day, gaining participation from artists and creatives worldwide, and as one resident put it, helping people see Copenhagen in another light. Hi, I'm Carl Azus with a lot of illuminating topics today on the world from A to Z. Thank you for giving us some time this Tuesday. The Pineapple Express has arrived in the U.S. state of California. It's the second atmospheric river to strike the Golden State within a week's time. An atmospheric river is a band of wet weather. The current one, bringing heavy rain and snow to California, is expected to last through Tuesday. And it's sometimes called the Pineapple Express because it reaches the North American West Coast all the way from Hawaii. The hardest hit area of California is the southern part of the state. Excessive rainfall poses a risk to more than 14 million people there. Los Angeles was forecast to receive half a year's worth of rain by Tuesday. Authorities were keeping a close eye on river water levels and warning people to stay away from them, saying they shouldn't even get close enough to have a look. Eight counties were under a state of emergency on Monday. That speeds up resources to those who need it and may include the activation of the National Guard. In addition to flash floods, landslides are a threat in this hilly part of the country. Some folks were evacuated because of the danger and school systems were closed in Malibu. Despite all these effects, atmospheric rivers do play an important and positive role in the Golden State. Scientists say they provide a lot of the annual rainfall that the West Coast needs and can help resolve the droughts that it's prone to. But in this case, with two of these weather events hitting in a short amount of time, many residents won't think the benefits outweigh the drawbacks. Upward knowledge. Sphenopalatine ganglioneuralgia is another term for what? Migraine, dizziness, concussion, brain freeze. It's a term for pain or headache caused by consuming something cold. It's also known as cold stimulus headache, ice cream headache, or brain freeze. Imagine the joy of connecting with your loved ones, browsing the web, or even playing games using only your thoughts. Elon Musk's Neuralink is joining a list of companies working on implants with the potential to improve lives and fundamentally change the way we interact with technology. You can operate a computer or a smartphone by simply thinking about moving. No wires or physical movement are required. Researchers say a brain-computer interface will allow a person to use their thoughts to control a device like a computer or a phone. If you can get a device that can detect and uh, interact with brain activity, which is all electrical signals, then you can potentially restore that component of the brain. If the technology works, it could one day have a wide range of health benefits. I think this is a case where we definitely want to improve the longevity and the lifespans and the health of everyday people, especially those who have mobility needs. Experts say we're still years away from the device reaching consumers, but as Congress continues to grapple with how to regulate tech companies in a rapidly changing world, these implants are raising concerns around privacy and transparency. There are also concerns about the safety of having a device implanted into the brain. Last year, the U.S. Food and Drug Administration did give Neuralink approval to begin human clinical trials. But before that, it had raised concerns about the devices moving within the brain after they're installed and about whether they could be taken out without causing damage. There have also been concerns about infections, malfunctions of the implants, and other neurological problems in animal trials. Elon Musk has said Neuralink's researchers are, quote, extremely careful. On this date in world history. 
February 6th was a significant date in the history of Singapore. A British administrator named Sir Thomas Stamford Raffles had arrived on the island in January of 1819, and on this date that same year, he signed a treaty that founded Singapore as a British trading port. Hey, speaking of Britain, this was the date in 1952 when Queen Elizabeth II ascended to the throne. She was 25 years old at the time and would go on to become Britain's longest reigning monarch, serving 70 years before passing away in 2022 at the age of 96. And on this date in 1971, four, Alan Shepard took a swing at a golf ball on February 6th and made history because of where he was, the surface of the moon. The astronaut actually took a couple shots. The first didn't go very far, but the second has been estimated to have traveled anywhere from 40 yards to more than 200 to, quote, miles and miles. Take a look at a camera that will be taking one single picture for 1,000 years. It's called the Millennium Camera and is an ambitious project from an experimental philosopher at the University of Arizona. The special camera set up overlooking a Tucson area desert was designed to take one extremely long exposure of the vista over the next 10 centuries. The idea is not only to one day show how the environment changed over time, but also to inspire discussions now about actions that can be taken to shape its future. But as far as the finished photo is concerned, it won't be ready to view until the year 3023, so check back then, I guess? Next, are there any beneficial uses for scorpion venom? Probably not if you're stung with it. Of course, it can be used to make anti-venom to treat scorpion stings, and it's being studied as a possible treatment for diseases like lupus and some forms of arthritis. In the nation of Turkey, efforts are underway to extract and sell this venom. It's a painstaking process. Scorpions are more closely related to spiders than mammals, so they don't actually produce milk to nurse their young, but people do milk them and what they're milking them for is the venom they use to kill their prey. Scorpion milkers can make a pretty penny from the practice. One liter of venom is worth $10 million, but it's a lot of work to get that much. Metin Orenler owns a scorpion farm in Turkey, and he knows just how tedious it can be. A scorpion has two milligrams of venom, and we need 300 to 400 scorpions to get one gram of venom. The process is repetitive and requires a delicate touch. Scorpion farmers have to carefully hold the wriggling guys in place with tongs and then gently squeeze their needle-like stingers. The whole ordeal yields only one tiny drop of venom. Orenler's farm milks about two grams of venom a day. It's not a lot, but with venom this precious, it is well worth the effort. After it's collected, it's dried into a powder and exported to France, the United Kingdom, Germany, and Switzerland to be used for all kinds of things. Painkillers, cosmetics, antibiotics, and it's even used to treat brain tumors. No wonder the stuff is literally worth far more than its weight in gold. What's known as the Magnolia State, the Hospitality State, and the Bayou State is the next state we're visiting today. It's Mississippi, home of St. Martin High School. Miss Marsh's class is watching from the city of Ocean Springs. Welcome. And in the Buckeye State of Ohio, a big hello to Mr. Renner's class. St. Ignatius of Loyola School is in Cincinnati. And they're off, slowly. Well, the gates have opened and they've started to move. It's not every day you see a horse race where the fans are faster than the animals, but that's exactly what's happening at the event in Japan known as the world's slowest horse race. As the AFP news agency puts it, they move at a plod rather than a gallop, but these are workhorses. They weigh twice as much as thoroughbreds. They were bred to pull heavy loads like these sleighs that weigh more than 1,300 pounds. And the event pays tribute to when the animals were first brought to northern Japan to plow fields and haul heavy materials. There are unbridled fans of this, would you call them croupies, who mare to saddle up and take the reins of watching the main attraction set a pace for the long haul, whether or not they canter fetlock in a cold-blooded victory with high horsepower. I'm Carl Azus, chomping at the bit to tack on all the horse puns I can think of, and thank you so much for watching the world from A to Z. You mean the world to me.